Well, Hamilton, as we know, on our last show, uh, the one and only Connie Smith was at the groundbreaking ceremony for the first Ontario Centre renovation. Joining us now to tell us more about the project and everything else happening in Hamilton, PJ Mercanti and Lou Fraporti. Gentlemen, thank you both very much for joining us here today. Thank you. Great to, be here. Great to have you here. Uh, Hugh Pegg, Commons, uh, the, the list is going on. And finally, have the renovation started? The renovations have officially begun. So we broke ground on May 16th and uh, it'll be an 18 month renovation. We've got a lot of work done already with regards to the plans and the designs and so we had a running start but uh, we're officially closed down for the next 18 months. If folks go around Bay and York they'll see the the construction fencing up uh, and we're delighted that we've started finally. Uh, Lou, we, we talk about um, s uh, examples that are out there. I was just in Pittsburgh recently. Talk about what Hamilton it's kind of, but boy, what it could be with what Pittsburgh has to offer. And there are other cities out there too. I don't know, would you agree to that statement or your, those thoughts? I, I would absolutely agree with that. Um, I spend a lot of time traveling. I just came back from Phoenix, uh, sorry, from Austin, Texas with the community of, of business leaders and government officials. PG and I both, as a consequence of our work on the Commonwealth Games, had an opportunity to travel around the world. Uh, there are a host of examples of communities that are thriving and prospering in many cases like Pittsburgh that had a history of antiquated businesses and a suffering economy that have been able to transform themselves. Mike, I've been in Hamilton for 30 years and, and I will say that the quip about us never missing an opportunity to miss an opportunity <laughs> is something we continually seem to experience. But in this moment with the work that PJ and others have done around this asset and the investment, we feel that this could be our Pittsburgh moment, if you will, a moment of transformation and transition, but a great deal depends upon whether we can all work together to solve some really difficult problems in order to achieve that goal. Well, PJ, uh, Lou just hit the nail on the head there. Can we all work together? And, and I think we know what you mean by all when we look at our, our council and, and those people that are involved. It, it's and of course then we're dealing with our uh, you know the Twitter hackers and all this stuff mm -hmm. too it can be touchy sometimes how are you managing these eggshells right now and, and feedback and what we're trying to do to build this great city one of the values of HUPEG has been that of collaboration and and you know we are intentional about that and one of the reasons why there's been a delay with the project that we're delighted is now um, you know obviously happening is we wanted to bring the world's best to the table to be partners with with HUPEG and so we're proud that Oakview Group and Live Nation are at the table as partners with us we're We've got a great working relationship with City Hall, Council and staff, and we want to bring other players to the table to have conversations about how we can really level up the investment in both the assets and the community um, interactions around the facilities. So having everybody at the table, having as many voices as possible contributing to that conversation, I think will result in a more meaningful outcome for everybody. But we have been hyper-focused on partnerships and having the right types of partners at the table to help magnify the investment for the community. And of course, uh, Lou, those relationships, th they take time to, to build, to, to get everyone on that same page as PJ mentioned too, and, and start to talk the same language to, to the masses. Right. Well, I, they do, and, and of course, so much of that is about uh, creating trust. Uh, and that's a very difficult thing to do socially, generally today, if, for the reasons that you've touched on, Mike, whether it's social media uh, or, or the focus on narratives rather than substance. You know, when we grew up, I think we were all aware of the wisdom that it's not what you say, it's what you do. Mm -hmm. And so doing, in PJ's case and in the case of the other business leaders are, uh, who are involved, doing is now critical. What exactly are we going to do and can we demonstrate the ability to lead and succeed? And I'll, and I'll make one comment. I think PJ alluded to something which is not generally understood and which we're quite anxious to communicate around. And that is that the private sector partners uh, that one can incent to come into a community are often decisive in determining the future of the community. The great transformation stories, uh, civically in the U.S. particularly, have been about creating an environment that's conducive for investment. Right? Do you, you want to be able to incent risk takers to deploy their capital, bring that energy. And PJ's success in um, attracting the Oakview Group and Live Nation to this community uh, is going to be, we think, a decisive moment in the city's history. Why? Because the creative industries, particularly in music, which is going to be the focus of the facilities, are massive catalysts and accelerators of economic investment. 
we all have loved the bulldog and the bulldog story, but the reality of what a Taylor Swift concert can bring to a community in terms of economic investment is exponentially larger than what an OHL team can bring. And it's that opportunity now that we feel the enormous pressure to leverage effectively and be successful with. And, and, and you mentioned uh, a Taylor Swift era's tour, for example, and we know it's going to Toronto, um, but the, and that economic buildup additional hotels are going to be required in our great city as we continue to evolve. Sea hotels down there. We're getting hotels up at the airport. These are all things, as you alluded to, we already have a great re restaurant scene. That's going to continue to build. This is all of a sudden going to be a destination for concert goers and, and, and those involved. Absolutely. The, the activation that the venue will um, manifest is going to be tremendous. And when you look at uh, the quality of concert that Live Nation will be able to bring through Hamilton. It will fill the hotels downtown. It will uh, result in the need for more hotel inventory. And, and it's not just music that, that we obviously are focusing on. While that'll be a, a key part of it, we do intend to have um, sport tenants back, so the Toronto Rock, other hockey uh, type of assets. And we intend to be aggressive on bidding on major uh, events like Memorial Cups, World Juniors, um, things like the Junos and the and Curling Canada Briar Cup. So we want to have a lot of really unique events, family events, sporting events, including music as being a feature uh, component of this, so that that way there's a lot of different reasons to come to downtown and for people to enjoy this new wonderful arena asset and to visit the restaurants, the hotels, the shops after before and after the events. And Lou, by putting such an eye on the city of Hamilton, and we saw a little glimpse of that during the, the, the World Cycling Championships a, a number of years ago. We've seen it during some Grey Cups, but now we're going to have a full calendar worth of why you should be coming to Hamilton. Man, oh man, this, to your point, this is what's going to all of a sudden turn that meter up just a little bit more and say, okay, this is Hamilton proud now. Mike, it can, and we hope that it will, but uh, it's all going to come down to execution in the end. And I would take issue with one thing you, you mentioned a moment ago, and that is referencing our thriving hospitality industry. In fact, it's not really thriving. Uh, our retail restaurant and hospitality industry, particularly in the downtown core, has for a number of years really struggled. It struggled because of COVID and the lockdowns, inflation, all of the economic factors that confound really the entire country have been particularly heartfelt in this city. PJ is in that industry. He knows how hard it is to, to create and maintain a successful business. And we feel um, very passionately about the, uh, the, the plight, if you will, uh, of those downtown business owners uh, in, in an era of very low commercial occupancy, that we need to create a new story and then act on it in a way that attracts uh, and incents others to come and make investments in the downtown core bring new restaurants, bring vibrant foot traffic, but there's a lot of hard work to be done if we're being honest with each other about issues like safety and security in the downtown core. And this is where our partnerships, whether it's with police services, city leaders, other business owners, the BIAs, and we're gonna start a new one, are going to be critical in having the conversations that are gonna be important to securing that future for our kids. Lou, I, I smile every time you talk, and, and you are so lucky, PJ, to get to talk to this gentleman on a daily <laughs> basis because you just feel so energized. And I see your smile a little bit too. You know, having backers like Lou and, and like the Mercanti family and the Dennis Concordias and the Mark Woos, the list goes on and on. Those are the champions that you've been able to build trust with over the years and who are now kind of leading this. And, and we're blessed to have yeah. leaders like Lou and, and his associates and, and Dennis and a great team around us. And, and you know, it's been that, that team effort that's really helped to, to bring this forward and those relationships that have been uh, curated over, over decades and, and everybody that has, um, we have the same values and the same aligned uh, vision on a better Hamilton. And so having uh, Hamilton uh, born and bred and passionate yeah. uh, citizens, it makes, it makes for um, an easier path when you trust the people that you're working with. We got to wrap though, with all the moving parts, new announcements, things happening, where is the best place that people can get kind of up to the minute information, you know, within a day or so? How, how can people know what's going on? So we launched a new brand called The Commons. My, so if, if uh, citizens visit My Hamilton Commons, uh, it's a website, uh, it, there's a LinkedIn page and an Instagram page where we're providing updates on the not only the arena project and the other entertainment assets, 
but other community initiatives related to to the uh, the broad build out of the entertainment district. So myhamiltoncommons.com, I believe, is the is the web link, and and there's a lot of great information where the citizens can learn about the project, different aspects of it, the entertainment assets, the community initiatives, the partnerships that we referenced before. So that's the best uh, portal to to get a lot of great information. And if I know how the Mercantes think, you're already thinking of your opening act that you're going to have in Hamilton. You're getting to that point. There's been you? a lot of debate already <laughs> with our partners at OVG and Live Nation about who would be the best uh, best opening act. That's I those can only imagine. Are happening. I can only imagine. I love it. Hey, my man Lou, thank you so Mike, much for coming in. Your positivity and your vibe here in Hamilton, PJ, my man. Thank you. Thank you for thank your you, time Mike. as well.